Hello there. My name is Melissa Wokolo, and I am foremost a, a mom as well as a freight, bro freight broker for our family company. Um, but I also help others that are in the industry, you know, sharing is giving, giving is sharing. And I believe first and foremost, we must be leaders by example and as a, as a servant. So I spend probably about a couple hours a week. Um, and right now we are in a shippers challenge. So those that are part of my Slack group, down in the comments, you can um, grab a link um, to my website. And there is a link on my website to join our Slack group. Um, if you are a freight broker who wants to maybe just have some accountability, some time um, with others learning, um, because I believe that we all need to have a teachable spirit, even though I've been a freight broker for now going on 25 years. Um, yes, 25 years will be this year. And so June actually will be 25 years. So without further ado, you're going to go into a meeting that we had um, just in May of 2024, um, and it is considered our second week. And so throughout the video, we're going to study what was last week and what we kind of learned. Um, and then we're gonna bring some other things in, um, which I call show and tell. So without further ado, let's get ready and get into the meeting. Hello there, how are you? Hello, how are you today? How are the holidays? Good, good, I had some time off, so that was nice. Tony, welcome. Hello, how's it going? It's been a while. Yes, yes, you're now a um, customs broker, so lots of, lots of things have changed. No, I'm not a customs broker. I want to study, I think. I know, um, I was just kidding. <laughs> I hope I can be one someday, but I'm not sure yet if I want to take on that um, educational route or not. It seems a lot. But before I go, it's a lot, I think. I, I think I've done some research and it's definitely a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've thought about that as well. Um, I certainly was wondering how beneficial it would be. Um, I don't know. It seems seems like it would be very different from brokering freight, of course, but. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Chris, oh my goodness, it has been, oh, what, a year and a half since we? Hey, really can you spoke? hear me? Yeah, it's oh. been a minute. It's been a long while. How you doing? Oh my <laughs> gosh. So are you brokering full time? Yes, yeah, so I got to update you. I'm kind of helping run it. Uh, so yeah, and no, trying to get into the military. Um, I was doing a lot of uh, uh, reefer and then had a claim last year that kind of threw me off a little bit. So I have to tell you about all that. Um, I think I hit oh. you a message with that. I'm asking for that attorney to try to get uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think that was uh, like a year ago or so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that... Are you, are you, are you three years old as a company? Yes. Yep. Yep. So we just awesome. got uh, approved. So trying awesome. to trying to figure it out, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do the uh, calling cause I got to get back on it. Wonderful. If I get any time, I know that Lita, Lita is our girl, you know, Lita. Oh right? yeah. She's been oh in yeah. A... We're super, she super just cool. got into the military as well. If I can get some time where, you know, yep, so... I'm not, uh, um, there's a lot of life changes in my life right now, so I don't yes. know if I can, but if I can, I would love to sit down with you, you guys and show you how to put the bids in because it took me, can I shock you? I'm a uh -huh. pretty smart girl yeah. and it took me, I had to read all <laughs> 248 pages and I read it yeah. six times. It's like, it's like studying for a college degree or something. It's crazy. I, I thought tell was, you, thought six there was times be video I read tutorials. it. Yeah, it's no no joke. video tutorials. It's no joke. And I, yeah. it took me, it took me six weeks yeah. to yeah. read it. And right. there is a shortcut. Once you do it once, it's easy. You're good. Okay. That's good to know. Cause I got intimidated. Um, I've been, uh, yeah, we've actually been in contact. Uh, we're super cool. So, uh, we're trying to work on it together. Um, but you know i'm a little bit behind uh just because like i said i'm not the owner of a company i'm kind of just uh 
like operations, controlling operations. Um, but I did build like a little app too. So I wanted to show you uh, like the little broker app I built, see what you think of it. And then oh, if I can good. find a way I can give it to everybody for free, uh, just to, you know, it's like a high level spreadsheet. So I'll see uh, what you think of it. And oh, then, uh, I would love, I would love to look at it. Absolutely. God bless you. You're always oh, such an ambitious care guys. You guys <laughs> need to hook up with this man. He yeah. is such a, I remember when he was just my little baby, but now he is moving <laughs> on to higher heights. Uh, yeah. And no, I appreciate all your guidance and, and help and, and positivity. And, uh, you know, likewise, I'm excited to meet everybody together. else as well. Yeah. Eric is here. Yeah. She, she's your, she's your girl okay. too. And yeah. I don't know where, remember Chloe? I don't know where Chloe's at yeah, now. I haven't I, heard from Chloe in a long time. Have you heard from Chloe? You know, I got her on Facebook. I have not uh, talked to her in a little while though. It's been oh, about a year wow. now, so I need to shoot her a message too and see how she's doing. Yeah, yeah. But, Mary uh, is still in our group, but she's not okay. here tonight. Monica is still in our group. Okay, um, so it's got the whole squad. Yeah. I tell <laughs> it's you, it's good to connect with everybody. So, yeah, Aww. I'm excited to uh, you know reconnect with everybody and uh, see what everybody's wonderful, got going wonderful. on. Wonderful. If you get stuck, I don't have a lot of time, but I could probably get on a call with you and Lita just okay. to walk you through one or two of them, and then you can. The great thing about the military is, is that the SDDC is, is that once you can see everybody else's rates, right. so you just literally follow what somebody else has done. Yes. And uh -huh. then, and then, then you watch the market and see, feel it out. Right. But the only negative is, negative is, is this is what happened to me. And I'm going to shock you guys tonight. Okay. Um, uh -huh. It was the worst experience I ever felt as a freight broker was, was the military. I, I bit off more than I could chew and I took some loads where I got 19 loads of some Humvees and I put a bid 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 in for all 19 and I scraped through it meaning that I barely made like $25 a load, but it gave me the confidence um, right. to now do it again. This time though, when I did it, I wasn't looking at all the matrixes. And I ended up losing sixty thousand dollars. Oh my god! That's, yeah. And I, I cried. I, I remember yeah. looking at my husband, and yeah. that was our, that was literally the the camel that broke the can. <laughs> I, I cried. Yeah, straw broke the camel's back. Yeah, it was it was a bad situation. So yeah, it's, in, it's intimidating because you can't give you can't give the freight back or you lose. You, you yeah, lose they everything. You out. Right, They'll right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I heard they don't play. Um, Do you still play. move military freight after me? That? Yes, I didn't. I, I I got scared of it. My husband won't let me touch the stuff. He, it's not that I wouldn't because I would get back on the horse because I'm just that type of person. But my husband is the accountant of our business, and at the mention of military, and it's <laughs> yeah, been this has been six years since this happened. He at the mention of it. He looks yeah. at me this weird way, and I'm like, oh, this means divorce. So, no, I'm not touching that way. No. <laughs> I, because... My uncle's in the military, and I was talking to him about getting involved with it, and I know I'm at, I'm not at the place to do that currently. But, yeah, uh, you have to he be was three years me, old. Yeah, he was telling me that there is no cap to what they can spend when we're in war. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy to know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's wild. So yeah, but maybe that, maybe we could do a, a military a of, class or something so we could all kind of I call it about you, it one day. Yeah. I tell you, I, I I would tell you though if I could convince my husband to be an agent for Lita and yes. let me move her freight. Yes. <laughs> that would yes. be the best because then I would take all the risk off, you know. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I it's, tell you. you know, so I, there's a uh, lady we work with who's uh, one of our agents. Her brother uh, has been doing it, so his father taught him. And so uh, I'll have to tell you about all that, but he's going to, he, he said he can kind of mentor us through it. I don't know. He hasn't said a fee or anything yet. So I'm kind of, you know, there's going to be something. You know, I know. That there's, <laughs> this is a, this is a crazy part is, is that I learned the military because I was an agent for SunTech TTS. Okay. And when I, when I did the military with them, they had a, they had a, what they call an agency. It was an agency that, um, wasn't part of it. They weren't an agent. They weren't freight brokers, but what they did is they took, they're out of Missouri and they took, I think one and a half percent or 2% of the gross revenue 
Oh, uh, okay. Uh, of the loads, uh -huh. just just to tender them over. Got it. Okay. Wow. And and and, that, that, and it's that's a process on it too. And and guess what? It's not worth it because you're gonna only make you're gonna only make ten percent margins on the military. Right. But there's one thing the military does have is they pay in two days. Once right. you're set up as a as a partner Sincata. with Sincata, yep. you get yep. paid in two days. It's a cash flow king when it comes to building your brokerage. Uh, it's what okay. it's it's everything you need as a strong point because let's say you do fifty thousand dollars right every you know every two weeks with them right that's right. cash flow that you can now pay your other carriers and start building credit so right. i can't say it's a negative do uh go get a line margins, of credit with that money and yeah so all these people are telling you you're making 18 25 30 percent margins are liars it, i you worked with the military for over like 10 years with as yes. an agent yes, and i yeah. made i made some where i made 30 percent margins but okay. overall for the whole uh -huh. year i probably cleared 12. 12%. Okay, which is still not bad if it's you know like you said if it's coming in in two days and it's consistent and but it but it yeah. is you know like you said there's a lot of uh, room for error too that you got to kind of keep an eye out for. That's in a back. whole another ball game. I'm, I'm you know trying yeah. to figure that out. I done did two or three of those live classes and I'm still confused. Uh, <laughs> well, know, the so. thing is the the key to the Sincata is is that don't assume that right. you're set up as a partner. You always call. Gotcha. Always okay. call. Okay. And once once it's tendered over, there's these little code that you have on the bill of lading. You uh -huh. call in, you give them that code and tell them you want to get set up as a trade partner. And okay. it takes two days and it should yeah. show up in your Sincata and then you can invoice it out. But we'll talk about that later. Yes, Let's I'm sorry to interrupt you. Right? No, okay. this is good stuff, right, everybody? <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is great. All right. Absolutely. Fantastic. But Absolutely. yeah, I need, I need to get my husband on board to let me go play, but he, he won't let me yeah. play with his his money. I have to. <laughs> but yeah, we'll all talk about it, man. Maybe we can, you know, do some type of, you know, something we can yeah. all learn together and, you know, everybody in Absolutely. class can benefit. And we'll figure yeah. something out because, you know, the more the merrier with something like this is, you know, everybody's got unique ideas and experiences and, you know, we can't fail as a team, you know. So. That's right. Uh, amen. But, uh, amen. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, jumping into. To Jumping into today, we're going to be talking, um, last week we spoke a lot, I'll go back through the slides really quickly just to give you an overview um, that this isn't about me as Melissa or what I've done, it's about you. And tonight we're going to talk a lot about you and why you're different and you must do the work, you must care about the people and only you are going to be able to do it. And the, the reality is, is that we lose out on the majority of a business because we just don't start it. We 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 have a hard time finishing it. And my daughter said something today that at first I could have gotten offended, but I didn't. She says, "Mom, Tori, Tori's in our office. Tori's my daughter. I have two daughters that work for me that are adult children. One of them is going to be 30 years old on July 26th. Um, the other one is going to be um, Victoria, who we're talking about, is going to be." 24 on June 6th, right? And she says, Mom, there's something that Tori possesses that you possess is that when a dog has a bone, you don't let up until you until you get what you want, right? You're like a dog with a bone. And so in logistics, in transportation, in sales, because you're doing cradle to grave sales. And what that means is, is that you're doing two different types of sales. And most people that are in sales don't do. You're doing the customer side of it, obviously, and you're doing the carrier negotiation side of it. And the, then you're also learning how to do finance as well because you have to know how to bid. And a lot of sales positions don't have that. So there's so many intricate details on how to get things done. And I want to share with you today about that you must do the work and you must do it in a way that is profitable. And what the profit is, is do you see things in the same light as, as everybody else? Do you see things in the same way as everyone else? If you haven't went to our Slack channel um, and read through our Shippers Challenge label, I, I really strongly recommend that you do it. Because if you go up to this post right here, some sneaky stuff right here. 
I was able to win a new client. And I say I'm winning because I haven't got a load yet, but I am over I have planned on a six weeks process of of a sales funnel directly for them. And a lot of times what other coaches try to tell you is that if you have a system, you can implement that system over and over and over and over again. And I have to be honest with you. Can I be honest with you tonight? I know that that sounds kind of, you know, yucky because you're like, aren't you honest every day? But I, I really truly want to say something that I, I've never said. I know I've never said it. Anybody in this room that has known me long enough has never said it. Is, is that I am completely different than all of you. And you can't replicate Melissa. And that's why literally I have stopped charging and stopped doing coaching. Um, and today I got a, another DM um, in my LinkedIn asking me, you know, how much, how much does it cost to do coaching with you? And, and right here she said, how much, how much, is, how much do you, will you charge, right? And I know we haven't spoken in a while. How much did you charge? I said, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't, I don't do it anymore. Why? Because you can't pay me to teach you to be Melissa. But I hope that I can teach you one thing. I can hope that I teach you how to be creative. I hope that I can teach you to see, and I want you to say this to yourself, I see differently than everyone else. I hope I could teach you how to process information faster so you don't lose out on deals. I hope I could teach you confidence that you'll put a quote on something and you can lose 60K like we just talked about. Believe me, I said it's my husband's fault that I'm, <laughs> that I'm not doing the military anymore. Not me, because I'd get back on the horse. I'd go after that bone again. So I'm hoping that being around me encourages you to not give up encourage you to see things differently so in this video right here it's only two minutes and 26 seconds long and i talked really fast and i'm sorry for that um you can slow it down a little bit by playing the playback speed to like 0.25 or 0.5 but i spoke really fast because i was trying to i i, I recorded it during my day but a carrier a broker posted a load and gave all the details and all the things that could go wrong. They said that they needed a headache rack. They said that they needed a um, hype stakes. So when I went to go sell to the customer, these are the things I mentioned. Hey, do you have any, do you have trucks show up with non padded hype stakes? So what I'm trying to say in all of this is, is that you have all the tools. Are you hearing me? Can you hear me okay? Say it. I have all the tools to make my brokerage successful. I just need to slow down, start, and finish. Do you promise yourself that tonight? That you're going to start and you're going to finish. Everything you put your hand to, you're going to start and you're going to finish. And I mean that. You're going to start and you're going to finish. Because I'll tell you what, if you start and you finish, and you start and you finish, and you start and you finish, I know you're going to be successful because it's the only thing. And I've never said this to any time. I say, oh, but if you do X or if you're on paper or if you do this or if you do that or if you do this, and these are the things I'm doing. It works for me. I don't know if it's going to work for Tony because Tony might go off on a tangent um, and share the love of Christ and start singing on the phone. And I can't do that. I can't sing on the phone. I don't even have a musical bone in my body. He might be able to tell, go in and dress up like a, a rhino <laughs> and go knock on doors and be a singing telegram. I can't do that. He has to do whatever he can do to do to be different and stand out and be the best he possibly can be, right? You need to learn how to tell your story and show yourself in a way that controls your pace. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. You need to learn how to tell and show yourself in a way that becomes a tool 
to control your pace. When you're playing a basketball game or when you're playing any type of sport, you know you have to control your pacing. Sales is no different. But I need to help you stay focused and immerse yourself in these very important important moments in time so that you can speed past others. And I'm going to tell you it's in the details. Just like this video. If you watch this video and all you did was do that with this video four or five times a day, you would have the content you need in order to build out a sales plan that works for your personality. Why? Because you already know that pipe companies might need pipe stakes, right? So why not buy some pipe stakes? Wrap them up, send them to a shipper that you want to get into, or better yet, hand deliver them and say, hey, I don't know if your other brokers <laughs> are not showing up with pipe sticks, but I thought that I would drop them off for you, okay? Now, when we're all discussing this, half of our blessing is lost in one thing, and that's the lack to start something. And I need you to remember, I need you to remember that you're writing, when you write something, okay, you have to reread it. Do you know what I mean by that? I hope you know what I mean. If you read something and you write to a customer, I need you to reread it and I need you to make sure you're not writing in a way that is for yourself. What I mean by that is, is that if you're writing, oh, we have GPS tracking on all of our loads, we care about the customer, we have um, excellent customer service, we have X, 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 X. We never give loads back. We, we, we always take care of the customer. We're always beating our chest. We're always arrogant. We're always, you see what I'm trying to say? Y'all, y'all seeing it, right? Identify with what your reader wants to hear, right? Your reader wants to hear, the person that's reading the email wants to hear you discuss what's important to them. So as we talked about telling and showing and controlling your pace, always reread and remember you have to let them write things about things they want to know about. Do you think they care about customer service or whether the load has GPS tracking? That's all words. You need to show them how that works. How I would do it, you ready for this? You need to immerse them in a meandering journey. Let me tell you how I do it. I do things by being vulnerable. I would write something to a client like subject line. Ready? Subject line. I messed up. Here it is Friday, right before a holiday, and my customer calls me and says, I need a truck in Houston. In my arrogance, I said, yes, got you covered. Make a few phone calls, find out that the carriers who I thought would be desperate to get home don't want to get home. They want to stay out and make some money. And what I quoted on 2,500 to get back to Savannah is now going to cost me three grand and I'm going to lose $500. Does your broker lose $500 for you? Now you could write that or you can put it into video and you do it in a way that only you can do it. Just like I said, this isn't about me and what I've done. It's about you. How do you resonate with people? You have to learn that first and foremost. What makes you resonate with people? And you have to stop Take your time and build out a sales plan. You're right. Calling 50 to 100 people a day is not going to work, especially if you have no intention of following up and all you're asking for them is for freight. You're not taking them on any kind of journey. You're not telling them how that they can, how, how, how wonderful it is that, that you met them. 
you have to take them on a journey. Are they someone that wants to get you off the phone really quickly? Or are they someone that likes to ask questions and talk to you and, and, and spend time with you and share thoughts and ideas and et cetera? Every person's different. So to say this is where everybody has gotten it wrong, including myself for the last you know three years I've been coaching, I have been trying to make a system that works. And guess what? If I'm going to make a system that works, I'm going to fail you because that means that every person has to be the same type of person. Is that true, guys? Is every person the same? Tony, are you and I the same? Crystal, Erica, are we the same? Do we have the same desires? Do you get up at four o'clock in the morning and cook like I do? Hey, do you? I don't know if you do. I do. I was up this morning at four o'clock this morning cooking. Because you know why? Because that makes me calm. That makes me calm. So every single person is different. So again, we usually have our live meetings on Mondays. We have two more live meetings coming this Monday and the following Monday. And I want to share with you that you have to come up with a simple plan. These are my four Ps. This is the, my sales process. I use pen, paper, phone, and person. I use phone first, then I use paper, then I use pen, and then I use person. So my phone is, as I pull, pick up the phone, I call somebody within the company. Sometimes it's a receptionist, sometimes it's accounts payable or accounts receivable. I use those methods if I cannot dig their information off of LinkedIn and find the right person that's in charge. Then once I find out who's in charge of freight, who tenders the freight, who loads the trucks, then I will send them something in the mail. Um, and then I use that as a focal point. And then I write them an e a series of emails. Um, and then the paper times is sometimes if they're hybrid, if they don't work at the office, then I won't send them anything and I'll go strictly to pen. In person, I do video. I don't do any in-person, you know, one-on-one -on -one with anyone. So if you like knocking on doors, then you can knock on doors. But for me, I use video marketing um, for that. So if you don't know what your sales plan looks like, go to your Slack channel and go to week number one. Okay, so if you come up here on the Slack channel, and again, I highly recommend you watch this video. There's some really sneaky stuff right there um, that will make it better for you. Right here is week number one. Organize your 100 or 200 leads. Um, discuss on how to use Google Maps, how to do thomasnet.com, how to do lead generation, et cetera, and then be consistent. Um, Decide your simple sales funnel. How are you going to rearrange it so it all works out for you? Um, decide which learning commodities. What are you going after? Chris is going after military, right? Yay, I'm praying for you. So every single person is going after a specific commodity. Erica might be going after auto parts. Tony might be going after steel coils. Right? I don't know if that's true if you are, but if you are, you need to learn those commodities and understand them. So you become a consultative selling portfolio. And then as you're doing that, you can now use video, et cetera, to be able to showcase what you're already doing. If you're already broken already, you're losing a lot and leaving it on the table by not showcasing using video your processes your fumbles. I don't want to show you that you're a hero. I want to show your customer when you fumble and how you come out making the winning game point. And then deciding on your two to three zones. Why I was I was inside my zone when I when I landed another customer, which is this video that I was just showing you. Um I have a six I already found out who the customer was, by the way. <laughs> And now I need to get that customer to give me. And when I say I landed the account, I'm speaking it into existence already. I already know who the customer is. I made five phone calls and already found out who the customer is. And what a broker did, so you all know, is that they posted 
a load on the broker board and they said exactly what the commodity was. They said what type of equipment that they needed and um, when it needed to pick up and when it needed to deliver. And then I was able to find that those things were important to him, right? And he was having a hard time. And so I found out that the broker that, that he has been giving it to messed up several times. And that was able to now get me in a place where I'm now going to be able to um, work it out, right? So this was last week. Um, we already have a, um, I'm not going to go over it tonight because we already have a replay of last week. So let's get into today. We have about 15, 20 more minutes to go over tonight's discussion. Commodity-based creative writing exercises. You want an exercise tonight? I hope you're ready to exercise. I want you to remember show and tell and when you were in kindergarten, first grade, where you took your stuffed animal or your gerbil or you did something and you told a story and you were able to show and tell about it. I want you to do something and I want you to practice it today, this week, all right? How to show and not tell. I don't want you to tell your customer that you're number one in the industry. Don't you hate it when you go to look on LinkedIn, they say number one sales broker. How do they, how do you know they're the number one? Who said they were number one? That just turns me off, right? When I hear number one sales coach or number one X, I'm like, who says that, right? Don't tell your customer who you are. I want you to show your customer who you are by using video, using story with your pen. And when you're reading it, I really want you to make sure it's not from a third party perspective that you're not just writing stuff down because it makes you look good. This isn't an automobile company. This isn't an, uh, a used auto place. This isn't where you want to show all your specs. Oh, Tony has, has a uh, 98% muscle and uh, he works out 10 times a week. And uh, uh, no, this isn't about that. This is about how to show how to show who you are. And I'm going to tell you the greatest qualities about Tony. He is he has integrity. Sorry, Tony, to bring you up, but you just have a great name. Um, it's about showing who you are. How did you show it? You show a vulnerable moment where you were second guessing yourself and you say it. Your subject line for pen might be something like, I'm second guessing myself. Then your words were, yep, I've done it twice today where I've second guessed myself of whether this was the right bid or not. Bid or not, because the market is so volatile. But one thing I can tell you is, is that I pray I'm the person always, always that will never give a load back to you. That I will be in a position that if even if I mess up, that I will be able to do it. Now, things will happen in transportation. I'm not going to pretend that's not true. but and write a story in a way that he, you draw him in as a reader. And what did you hear in that story? You heard that Tony was a man of integrity, but he didn't, you didn't come out and say, Tony Banks is a man of integrity. No, this isn't a polit political you know, campaign, right? We're not having any slogans here. He could care less about your website. He could care less about what your company's made of or who you are. What he cares about is how to build trust. And that takes you learning and showing in a way to bring feeling and emotion into everything you do. You have to learn how to be charismatic in some way. Don't talk at them, but show them. Show them. So, for example, some of the things I do in my office is if I have a brand new client, I showed my client, like during the Christmas tree season last year, I showed my client how many phone calls I made. And I showed all the spreadsheet of 1,600 and something phone calls that I made, or was it 1,900? I don't remember, but it was a lot 
of all the phone calls I made in order to find reefer companies that would do multiple stops into Florida and Brooklyn and all these areas. And sometimes they had 18 stops. And then what I did is I slowed down, I mean, sped up those conversations um, and showed no volume, but little pieces of it um, and made some content of about eight to 10 emails. And I said, progress report number one. And then I showed the progress report. And then I put progress report number two. And I showed the progress report. So as I was doing this lane building with this client, I was showing them my progress. And I, at the time, I used bombbomb.com, which embeds right inside the video inside of your email. And so what did I do, guys? I want you to write this in the comments. Show them. Don't talk at them. Show them. Show them what you're doing. Show them how you're building out the process. Show them how you're getting them good rates. If Erica has a customer up in the Northeast, she's going to have 12 customers before the end of the year, and they're all going to be wanting to hire her. Um, she is not just talking to them. She's showing them how much work and effort she's putting in, and she's using things like ClipChamp, and she's showing them. Um, and there's a lot of software out now, right now that you can now use that are AI, where you just dump in your videos, and they'll make shorts out of them that are just like one minute long, all right? Just Google it. Just look, Google shorts with video. You don't even have to be a video expert, but you just say progress report one, and then you tell the story. I woke up at eight o'clock this morning. I was feeling that I could not get what you needed from me. I was believing that I could do this, but it was becoming difficult because I came in here yesterday and I called 150 carriers and I, and I couldn't get anywhere, but today's going to be a better, better day. And let me show you what I did yesterday. It's only a minute long. And it shows sped up a minute of what you're doing. How hard would that be, Erica? It wouldn't be that hard. Instead of you thinking, what can I say and what can I do? Stop talking at them and show them. Show them. Your clients will love the process of discovery and seeing you solve problems. And the next time that's on your plate, whether it's from a carrier side or whether it's from a broker side or whenever, let's say you're a carrier and a broker treats you like crap, it happens, right? Whatever you're doing, show your clients the process of discovery. Show them how you solve the problem. Show them how you were able to get a lumper in, um, a lumper situation resolved. Show them how you are getting to be able to get a bill of lading situation solved. Show them that you're changing a tire on the flipping side of the road. I don't know. Show them that you're able to solve problems. Show them, like I did just recently, I had a customer who shut down for inventory last minute because their whole system shut down for Klockner Metals. Not even my customer. And my customer's like, I can't get you unloaded until Tuesday. That means that truck's going to be sitting for five days. So I started calling everybody I knew in Indianapolis and said, I need to offload this material off of a flatbed that has tarps onto another flatbed, and I need you to tarp it and deliver it next Tuesday and hold it for five days. And how much is this going to cost me? And I recorded every bit of that process. And then I created a video from 20, 30 minutes long down to a series of five. Um, five one minute videos that I can now use in my email marketing and say, I, and my subject line will be how to ensure when a customer shuts down, customer shuts down as a subject, how to ensure that delivery gets to where it needs to be, even if you're, if, you, if you're held up for five days. And I'm giving them content just like if they were on LinkedIn following me, right? That's where you need to be. That's the, that's the journey that we're at. This is what other brokers aren't doing. Learn realism instead of romanticism that will keep your reader, your hearer to begin the journey of trusting you as an expert in the field of commodity consultation. Now, I'll tell you what, when I say that to be an expert in the field, you have to study. I want you to put in the comments, study. You have to study. You can't just pick up the phone as a newbie in the industry and say, hey, I'm a freight broker. Give me freight. 
you're going to bring a bad name to all of us. So you have to do your work. You need to be picking three to four commodities, three to four commodities, and you need to learn them and be dreaming about them. If you're not dreaming about these commodities, you haven't studied hard enough. YouTube is a fantastic way to learn. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. Well, get off the handle because you came into this business wanting to be a problem solver. So be a problem solver. Your first objective, pick four commodities, steel coils, injection molding machines, steel coils, injection molding machines, plastic pipe. Uh, what else could I do? I don't know. Uh, sandbags. There we go. There's four. Learn how they ship. Look at manufacturers. Look at what type of docks they have. Look to see what type of trailers are in there, right? And if you're a person that likes to go knock on doors, find four commodities within your county that your county is known for when it comes to manufacturing. Develop techniques that bring out so much drama. All of us love it. We all love a good movie that has a lot of drama, right? Women especially. Hallmark, oh my goodness, right? I grew up on the Golden Girls. <laughs> I was watching it the other day. I'm like, Chi Chi, my daughter Chidera, come, Chidera, come. I want to show you what my grandma and I used to watch. I put about five minutes into the Golden Girls. I had to switch it off because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of things I wouldn't let my 12 year old watch, but I watched it with my grandma when I was her age, right? So <laughs> uh, develop techniques to dramatize as much as the action as possible so that your potential future client can feel the movement and the trajectory of having you in their lives daily. And that requires you to be super good at creative writing. Super good. It shouldn't be more than, I would, I would say your first email shouldn't be more than 30 words. If you, can get, if you can get it down to 15, better. Your second one would be just talking about your day, but talking about your day that may show you in a vulnerable position. Hey, I, you, you will not believe what happened to me today. A driver was supposed to pick up and deliver at 7 o'clock in the morning. Customer wasn't upset because I just told the driver he had to be there at 7 a.m. But here it was at noon. I could see the GPS. And I actually showed a picture of the GPS and I circled it, right? Um, the driver was supposed to be at this location and he's sitting here, with ha which happens to be a construction site with a construction company, but it's not a truck stop and it's right next to a waffle house. And I've already called the construction site to say, is the driver still there? They say, yeah, he's still there. I could see him across the street um, and it's a hot shot and it has pipe on the back, plastic pipe on the back. So you know, what's going to happen here? And I said, I, did, I just want to do a wellness check because here it is. He's been sitting there since, since midnight and here it is noon. He's been sitting there for 12 hours. Come to find out the driver is a type one diabetic and he fell asleep and he thinks that his blood sugar got low and he couldn't wake up. These are things that you, and I'm not saying, you know, that you want to talk about this to show how much of a hero you are. You want to talk about it because you're humanizing yourself. You could have gotten angry, right? Most brokers would have gotten angry, right? And screamed and yelled and said, why are you not delivering? Pick up your damn phone, right? But I didn't do that. My team didn't do that. We were sincerely worried where we got somebody from the Waffle House to go knock on his door. And then he was able to wake up, got him some, something to drink you know, so that he gets some sugar into his bloodstream. Thank goodness that we have good people that was able to do that. There's so many things that you can do. That you, can, you can humanize the moment that they are going to have you in their lives daily, that you, you're, you're going to make mistakes, guys. You know that, right? You're going to show up late. You're going to do things wrong. But if you don't have a human, you know, crap happens. You have to have a human and tell you what, if, your cust if a customer calls you on the phone and says, nope, you need to be 99.9% .9 on time. And you hear that, right? 99.9% .9 on time. Really? How are you going to be 99.9% .9 on time as a freight broker? 
It's practically impossible. But you want customers that are dream clients. Your story of who you are as their future freight broker does not begin until your story can be shown. So I'm going to show it. Even before you move that first show, shipment, you're going to show who you are. You're going to show your Tony. You're going to show your Erica. You're going to show your Felicia. You're going to show your Keisha. You're going to show your BJ, Chris, and Crystal. You're going to show up, right? And you're going to show up. Promise me you're going to show up. Promise me that this is going to be valuable, right? And you're going to show up. Because that's what it's going to take. And you're going to say, I don't know how to do creative writing. I don't know how to do video. I don't know how to do all these things. Well, why not? What is so busy in your life that you can't learn? I'm not a tech person. After this, after tonight, Erica's going to be on here and she's going to hear you. <laughs> she's going to tell you when she met me two and a half years ago, I said, I don't even use tech. I use paper. Chris might have even been there when I talked about it. Most will discuss systems. And I'm going to break it up. I discuss systems. If you have this system, this is how I did it. This is how I was able to make it. This is how I was able to build a $10 million book of business. I too have tried to define my life's work as a system that can be re replicated. It's a lie from the pit of hell. I cannot be replicated. God created me in his unique image. I cannot be replicated. You cannot be replicated. I need you to hear that. Say it. I cannot be replicated. You have to learn who you are. You have to learn what makes you tick. You have to get vulnerable with yourself and get vulnerable with your clients because that's how you build trust. If you went into a church and sat down in the front row and it was beautiful, all the singing was great. But then when the pastor gets up there, he starts talking about hell and, and how you're going to go to it and, 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 and it becomes a brimstone experience. And you're defined in every way and you're a sinner and you're bad and you're, you're never going to make it and, 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 and how he's perfect and how he has a perfect little family and, and he does everything right and he hasn't cursed and he doesn't drink and he doesn't smoke and he's never done anything wrong in his life. Are you going to be able to relate to that? Or we, have we all fallen short of the glory? Have we all fallen short? I've fallen short. I've messed up. I have discussed systems as well. So if you follow X, 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 and X, you're going to be able, but I can't define my life's work in a system. I'm sorry, guys. If you don't ever want to come to class again, I, I, I have had a real moment, and it might be because I'm having a life experience in a couple months. I'm going to have a new, new little baby in my life. I don't know if that's what the reality clicked in my head, but I'm telling you what, I showed up and I, the reality is set in and I cannot be replicated, but I hope I can help you in one way. I want you to be you. I want you to learn you. The reality is, is that you need to learn how to show up and stop talking and just show up. I need to learn how to show up. I need to, but you know what? I do show up. I show up every morning at 4 a.m. when I'm there doing my kids' homeschooling. I'm there when I make sure dinner's on the table. I make sure that I'm cooking at four o'clock and I'm making tea for my husband. I'm putting it in his thermos. I'm showing up for those things because they're important to me. Are you showing up? The reality is, is I have the ability to know what to show. Tonight, you're going to learn about new eyes. Remember the Slack channel? I want you to learn about new eyes. You have to come in with the ability of saying, God, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I have a relationship with you, but I can see my eyes can see far. I can see that I'm going to be good in this business. I can see that I'm going to do great things. I can see that I'm going to, I'm going to bury my insecurities. They're no longer there. I have to move past the fear. I'm no longer going to be a part of that. I'm going to get on the phone because I really want to find out who that decision maker is. And I'm going to spend the time to learn exactly what he likes and what he dislikes. And I'm going to show him that he can trust me because I trust me. If you're going to give up after 10 phone calls, why would he want to trust you anyways? 
it's not working for you because you're not trustworthy. I know that's hard to hear. Please leave. Don't come into my classes anymore. If, if, if I cannot tell you the truth, the reality is, is I have the ability to know what to show. I show things you guys wouldn't show. You guys will probably talk about you're a great provider. You're you're great. You're wonderful. You can do great things. Everything is great. And I show all the times I messed up. Hear me tonight, guys. Please hear me. I show all the times I mess up. I show them I mess up. Are you guys strong enough to show that you mess up? But then you show them how you work through the problem. Allow them to experience the emotions of what you're made of on a gut level. You've got to know when to show. So tonight we're going to talk about that, right? Here's a pin. Your whole focus this week. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is to write differently. Do you, I remember my first year in sales, my best, my best email was, do you got freight? Question mark. Do you know why that was my best email? Because I sucked at sales. Do you know what? I don't even do sales anymore. Because I am a fallen, imperfect, crazy person that shows up every single day for my kids. I show up every single day for my customers who have cancer. One of my, and I'm starting to cry right now because one of my biggest customers has cancer right now and I show up every day for him because I can't, I can't let his company know that anything's going wrong while he's out of the office. You have to show up for people. You have to allow them to see that you're an imperfect person. You have to allow them to see your emotions. When they ask you, how are you? Say you're not doing great. Say it. Can you say it, Erica? Can you say, I'm not doing great today? I'm not doing great. Absolutely. Say it all the time. (laughs) I'm not doing great because I have been calling and calling and calling and calling for a customer. And I feel like my head is spinning and all I want is one load. Can you be honest with that? Can you write an email to your client, your potential client saying, a subject line, exhausted. Yesterday, I had a potential client that gave me a load and I called 160 people. In the end, I didn't get the load, but tomorrow's a new day or today's a new day. Can you do that? And the next day you show happiness. Guess what? I got a few phone calls and this is what we're doing. These are potential clients. This isn't the clients that you're working on. These are potential clients. You're showing him that you're a human. You have bad days and you have good days. Then you need to have strong opinions. Opinions about who you are. What you're made of. But don't tell them what you're made of. What are you going to do? Show them what you're made of. Show them. And if you're saying, how do I do that? then you better get in the Slack channel and ask the question. This is what I've done this whole year and I have not ever moved a load before. And Missy, Melissa, Mama Bear, you need to show me what kind of opinion should I have? What type of emotion should I have? What type of sensation should I have? How are my, sensation is all about how they're going to have a sensation. How are they going to feel in it all? How are they going to feel? You need to get them to a moment where they can feel something, right? Now, really quickly, we only have about three more minutes. Six guiding principles for stronger showing. Number one, 
use evidence to support claims. Live situations of use of GPS, track and trace, carrier compliance, or problem solving. Number two, replace the abstract with concrete. Don't generalize, humanize. Take a screenshot of this so you can really, because I'm going to get through them fast. We'll talk more about it next week. Don't tell your customer what they need. Show them how it's done. Don't say that you're the greatest things in sliced bread. Show them how you're doing it. Even the mistakes. Substitute vague description with specific sensory details. Instead of subscribe, describing your processes of how your office works, show, tell a story of your processes. Show them how you're doing it. Number four, avoid relying too much on body language. What I mean by that is when you're doing video, don't be gimmicky. Believe in yourself that you don't, do not need over-the-top personality. That was my biggest mistake when I first did video. All right? Number five, show emotions through dialogue. Be very vulnerable about how you came to be who you are. Show all your mistakes, even if it wasn't in this industry. If you were in the nursing industry, how did you make a mistake? What did you mistake this and mistake that? Show them who and how you became Crystal or Erica or BJ. Filter observations through the narrative voice, third-party voice. Filter it. Make sure you're reading everything you're writing, everything you're putting out in video. Make sure you're watching it. Share a story about a real situation. Be very careful that how you're writing it is not from a third-party voice. Make sure that it's from a human voice and make sure it's not where you're telling them, but you're showing them. So that they can feel it. They can feel that the grass is greener. They can feel that, that you felt the emotion of you about ready to fail. And then all of a sudden, boom, that truck was right there 13 minutes away. And it, the shipper is going to close in, in 20 minutes. And, and you were able to squeeze in there. And then show them the, the testimony of what your customer said when he said, you're doing great. You're doing wonderful. Absolutely, you're putting in there. So tonight, what are you going to talk about with your whole family? I'm going to be a show me guy. I'm going to be a show me gal. I'm not going to be somebody who just tells it all the time. All right, everyone. Are we having fun tonight? Are you going to go out there tomorrow and be more and no more systems? Right, guys? No more systems. We're no longer going to be systems. We're going to build ourselves. We're going to do our best. We're going to do things differently. And we're going to show up every single day, right? I told you that this one was going to be different than anything you guys have ever done with me. Why? Because I'm getting real with you. We can no longer be systems. That's what C.H. Robinson is doing. That's what TQL is doing. They're doing systems. They're putting people on phones that don't know what the heck they're doing. You need to be the real person in this equation. You need to, to humanize being a freight broker. Amen? All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. I love you. I'm giving you hugs. You guys can do this. I know cold Thank calling you. sucks. You can do it. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did that video blow your mind or what? So much information. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.